Hi, welcome to my channel. Welcome back to Resurrecting Shorty Part 4. Last time we found some rust, we took off an exhaust, we cleaned up some of the chassis with a wire wheel, we cleaned up some more chassis with a wire wheel, we found some more rust, and more rust. Then we painted something, cut some holes, welded the holes up again, and then painted something. So let's start this video by repairing this hole in the end of the bulkhead outrigger. So to begin with, we're going to cut the end of the bulkhead outrigger out. So I'm just using a screwdriver to remove the piece of steel that I've cut round. It's just a little bit stuck in the end of the bulkhead. A couple of bits that hadn't cut all the way through. And you can see that it's got quite a lot of flaky rust has built up behind it. So I'm just digging all of that out as well. So I've now cleaned up all of the steel around the end of the bulkhead outrigger where I'm going to be welding and I'm now just marking onto a piece of steel where I need to trim it down so it will fit to replace the bit that I've cut out and once I'm happy with the way that it fits I'll put it in and then just start welding around it. So I'm just cleaning up the weld with a grinder just to tidy it up a little bit and that is that fairly simple repair all done. Next we're going to tackle this area at the rear of the chassis that we found in the previous video. This is going to be a more complex repair because we've got thin metal hole between these two pieces in here, there's thin metal here, there's thin metal here and there's thin metal sort of in this area as well. So what we need to do is cut this entire section out, put a new piece of plate in for the chassis rail and then retrieve these blocks from the piece that I cut off, make a new little tab for the bump stop reinstate these two strengthening ribs once we've actually got this main section put in I'm also going to remove these uh, strengthening plates where it's previously had a rear cross member put on so I can see at what extent this is this goes to and I'm going to replace the set, same section of the original chassis up to here where it gets pretty good again so initially what I've done is I've got this piece of cardboard and I've marked butting the piece of cardboard so it's in line with the top of the chassis rail, butted it up against this mount and then I've just pressed against the these ribs and the end of this so that gives me an approximate position for these and what I'm going to do is now cut these off so they're out of the way so that this can lay flat against these and then I'm going to mark or push through where the positions of those holes are in relation to that because these don't need to be massively perfect they just need to be in around the same place those off and put this back, hold that up against 
past that there, and I should be able to find the find the holes. That should give me the positions of those when I come to put it back together. So let's start cutting out. So under here, you know, I've taken that off, you can see this is where the new piece that was put on years ago sleeved over the existing chassis rail up to this point. And there's existing chassis rail down through here, probably to about here somewhere, but I'm going to take, I'm going to take this piece off and see where exactly that went to. And we want to reinstate quite a long section here. taken off all of the reinforcing plates that were around this join and there's uh, fairly large holes that have rusted through in the bottom of the new repair section. The bottom section here of the main chassis actually looks okay. This side looks okay, this side looks okay. It's rotted out on the inside at the bottom on the inside but actually the original chassis from 1965 that was there has survived better than the new section that was put on. Anyway, it's all fairly irrelevant. Now I need to cut out this side from here all the way down to about here so that we can look at replacing that in its entirety. There's probably some crush tubes in here that I'll need to avoid so I'll probably cut this out in sections so I can see exactly what's in there first. So surprisingly, there's no crush tubes between these. So I should be able to 
should be able to just carry on and cut this patch out as it is. So now this plate is actually off and you can see where it was starting there were soft spots in here 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 and here now you can see on the back where rust has got between that plate and the chassis rail and has just blown blown inwards a big lump So that's why it's best just to, rather than plating in between all of this rubbish, you can probably salvage these plates again because they're massively thick. So they probably haven't rotted very much. So we'll try and cut these out of this, remove everything from the back and then reinstate these at the end. But that's why we're taking this whole panel out and replacing the whole strip. previous patch on the underside anyway. There's a cut line there where it was trimmed down. Anyway, I now need a template for this piece of steel and tidy up all the edges. Okay, so I've replaced this side panel and obviously cut out this top section here, keeping this bit. I now need to do basically the same thing to the inside portion because that's not in great condition. And I need to put a plate on the top, uh, fill this section in, but I'd like to do that at the end. And then we'll also do a piece underneath. So we'll have effectively rebuilt this entire section of chassis. I have only come to this point, there's a good reason for it, to hold this section and this section together because I'm going to end up cutting the whole thing out. I'm going to weld this piece of scrap angle in between the two here to hold, to hold this into, into position because otherwise there's not going to be a lot holding this and this in, in alignment. Just like the other side, I'm going to start by removing the various the little bracketry bits 
that are in the way. So I'm going to try and save that bit. So in exactly the same way as I did on the outside of the chassis rail, I'm just using this piece of cardboard from a serial packet, pushing my finger to locate the holes and create a template to use to reposition them once it's all done. So that's the template made, I'm just checking that it is lined up with the holes. Time to get the grinder out. So after cutting that piece out, I've cleaned up all of the edges and tidied up where the new piece is going in, made a template and cut it out of a piece of 2mm steel. So now I'm putting the piece of steel in and aligning it using welding clamps so that I can tack weld it into place. So you'll notice that I do lots of tack welds for this all along the edges and I leave a gap in between and then when I come to do the full seam welding I just weld between the tack welds and I move around a lot so that I don't put too much heat in one place which can distort the plate. So having done both of the side pieces I've now cut out a piece for the top, which I'm welding in here. So exactly the same process as before, tack welding it into place and then fully seam welding it. So first of all, I apologise for all the noise. The reason is that it is absolutely, or it has been, raining quite heavily. So I've had to improvise a tarp across the doors over the shed because I can't get the truck any further in. And I don't want to get wet. Anyway, I have already welded in the bottom section of this piece of chassis that I'm repairing which I didn't bother to film because it's exactly the same process as I've done for the other three sides and uh, it's a bit awkward to get everything set up underneath to show but essentially I've gone from here to here with a whole new section all the way along the bottom just as I've done on the top and here so now I need to reinstate the, all the bracketry and everything on both sides of this and the holes for the axle check straps which I don't have fitted but I'm going to put everything back as it was so I've already dot punched the four positions of the holes using the template that I had before and I marked where the two stiffeners were and the positions of the holes where the two on the outside the two large brackets go so we'll start by drilling these holes 
which need to be 10 mil because I've checked the ones the other side. And I'm starting with a 4 mil drill bit and I'm going to work my way up. I do the outside, I'm going to put the brackets that go back on the inside first and uh, I've already drilled the four holes using the template that I made and they appear to line up perfectly with the ones that I've done on the outside so that seems to have worked well. So I've just got to put the brackets back. So to start with I'm going to put this simple little stiffener back in place and it's literally just a, just a short piece of plate that I've cut. Before I cut the old piece out, or the old piece off, I marked lines on the top of the chassis where the bottom of this was and where the top of it was because it runs at a slight angle, same as the one on the other side. So I'm now going to just put this, get the welder ready, Just going to put this on. It doesn't really matter, it runs almost from the top to the bottom. I'm going to line up the top by eye and line up the bottom and just tack this in to position. that needs to go back on is this bracket that I cut off. And that needs to be in line with these and flat with the top of that because this is one of the body mounts and this is the original one that I cut off that I'm going to reuse. So I've clamped this metal bar across the two mounts. Even though I've basically cut through this end, I'm still happy that this hasn't moved since I started. So I'm happy to be using that as, a, as an idea. So we've got that one clamped there, that one clamped there. So I just need, and I've got, I've also got lines marked on the top of the chassis from when I cut this off that I can line this up to. So it goes on here, goes this way around. And I just need to clamp it to this. Yeah, so that's touching, touching all the way along the sides of the chassis. it's lined up at the top so we'll tack that in so that's the inside section now reinstated with its stiffener and the body mount put back on. Pretty pleased with that. So now we do the outside. Right, I've reclaimed these two brackets from the original piece. So these will just go back on here in the same place that they came from. And I'll just show you 
This is the section of original chassis that I cut out. As you can see, when it was all on there and everything was, and these were still on here, there was a little soft, soft looking spot here. There was obviously a hole there and a hole there. But you can now see just how bad this section actually was. How, how thin it had got, particularly behind these two brackets. And the rust had just built up as stuff had worked its way in because they were only welded at the tops and bottoms. Stuff had just worked its way in and that had just gradually built up and the pressure of it that had rusted through and blown through the back. So this is going to last quite a long while now. I mean this, this has lasted since 1965. So now we need to put these into position, line them up with the holes, clamp them and weld them. So that's the first one tacked into position and I'm going to fully seam weld around all four sides of this and not leave the little gap that Land Rover did that allowed stuff to get in behind the plate. stop which fits under here will require a tab on each side to bolt to but what they did at the factory this is not the original because I've done work in this area before this is a piece of two mil plate that I bent the ends years ago and I welded underneath because they have a they have a strengthening plate effectively uh, behind the bump stop. But what tends to happen again, like behind these, especially with this with this lip, the plate has a tendency it gets uh, mud and stuff and crap gets forced in behind this, and then it rots out the rots out the little plate on the uh, bump stop and it rots out the bottom of your chassis rail. So what I think I'm going to do is I'll make a new one of these again but I will probably fully seam weld it all the way round. So once that's in then the bump stop can go back or at least I can mock the bump stop up and work out where to put the little tab that bolts it on. Okay, so I made a new new piece, a new strengthening plate. So this needs to go under here. I'm going to use the use the old bump stop. See that fits. That sits nicely in between the these portions and then the whole thing will go onto the chassis and line it up with the edges of the chassis 
check that I'm happy with the position, which I am. I'll take the actual bump stop out. We will clamp this, clamp this in. There, so that now that now fits like that underneath. I now need a couple of small pieces of of steel. Make up the tabs that fit that fix this on. So I've made up two tabs, which I've temporarily and loosely bolted onto the uh, bump stop. So I can now position the bump stop like so and tack weld these tabs into position. Yeah. So that's this section of the chassis sorted. And that's the bump stop strengthening plate and the tabs. And then on the other side, we've got the stiffener and the tab and the reclaimed body bracket. So that's about it for this video, thank you ever so much for watching and apologies again for some of the noise in the background from the flapping tarpaulin. If you've enjoyed this video please hit like and subscribe, feel free to ask me any questions or make comments below and I'll see you next time, cheers!